So let's use this periodic boundary condition to solve the PD analytically and uh, uh, numerically. So let's set the domain to be from 0 to 1. Okay, they are periodic. And uh, let's set our W initial condition x and 0 to be let's say sine of 2 pi kx and uh, let's set k to 1 first and then try a few different k's to see how it looks like so before we do anything can somebody tell me that do you expect the solution to be more or less accurate for smaller k or bigger k Smaller k, that's a test of if you paid attention for the last half an hour or not. Right? So wh why smaller k? Why is it more accurate for smaller k? Well, that means you paid attention in the first uh, class. Right? Uh, larger k means uh, the decay is faster. That's correct. Uh, that's from the Taylor series analysis of the analytical PDE. What I was asking is, do you expect the error to be larger or smaller, uh, the, 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 the error of the solution to be larger or smaller for bigger k or smaller k? So the, uh, the error has uh, the derivative of the function, so k will be a common factor, so the error will be k to the power of four. You paid attention in the last uh, half an hour, yes. So go, going back to the analysis of the truncation error, right? So again, that's the truncation error. The truncation error is proportional to, delta, uh, to, to the fourth order derivative of the function w. Fourth order derivative. So for bigger k or smaller k, it has a higher fourth order derivative. Every time you take a derivative of a sinusoidal function, you get 2 pi k out of this, right? If I'm taking the fourth of the derivative, I get 2 pi k four times. All right? The first time I it's get a cosine, the second time I get a minus sign, and then a minus cosine and a sign again. So I get 2 pi k to the fourth power. That means the larger the k is, the, I'm, uh, the, more, it's the, the amount of error grows very fast as my k increases. All right, and uh, uh, you can think of a particular interesting phenomenon that uh, if here's my grid points, one, two, three, four, five, etc., and my sine function is this, well, I actually don't know it's a fi sine function because all I get is zero. All right, or my, if it's a cosine function, let's see, it's a cosine function. Uh, what I get is, uh, uh, da, 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 da. okay, the cosine function may, let, let's, let's see, I get a cosine function whose period is like this. I get a even, that's a more extreme, right? So, so, so if I have a cosine function that uh, takes the value of one at every single Greek point, so if I, if I evaluate according to my numerical scheme, what is the derivative? What is the second order derivative of my function at the grid points? Zero. zero, right? Because the neighboring values, if you average them, they have the same value, one, as the value at the point. Uh, what's the actual derivative, second order derivative? It's far from one, right? Very far from one. It's very negative because it's, uh, uh, the curvature is, uh, is going to be <coughs> negative at the top. So, so basically, at very, very large values of k compared to the grid size, or in some sense, when k times delta x is going to be large, I know I will be committing massive amount of error in my approximation. All right? So, so that's a part of the analysis uh, coming from the last slide. The error is proportional to the fourth order derivative. So, okay, so now, I, from the analysis, I expected to have massive error for high case. So let's actually uh, 
code up something to see if uh, it's actually the case. Let's see. Um, where do we start? We have, let's set n to 10 again, okay? And uh, now my x is going to be, that's actually, uh, oh, okay, so, so here we have periodic condition. So just to make it easier for us to deal with, uh, let's set the total number of grid points to n plus 1. Okay, so that the actual number of variables is actually n, because the two, grid, two n, 1, 0, and 1, they are redundant. So, so x is going to be a link space of 0 and 1 and uh, n plus 1. Okay, so my x is just uh, 0 0.1, etc. Very nice. And uh, I'm going to set my w, w0, my initial condition, to be sine of, uh, what, uh, 2 pi, let's set k equal to 0 first, uh, equal to 1 first, I get a w0, uh, x and w0, uh, it's a sine function. We're good to go. 